Hey guys, this is Brian Rosner. I'm a little scruffy because I'm still camping off the grid in New Mexico in this unprecedented uh, winter that they're having here. I've actually been up almost all night um, trying to finish my latest book. I figure it's a good time to get some work done, but um, I wanted to, to talk to you guys some, about something really quick. In my new book, I address uh, brain retraining, and just for the record, I'm not um, going to take sides on brain retraining and say that you know, these people are right or these people are wrong. Um, I've been most helped by following uh, the Eric Johnson approach to healing, which is the um, very small quantities of toxic mold can be extremely poisonous. Kind of like uh, one example is thinking of like a euthanasia. You can euthanize uh, an animal. Like my dog was sick a couple years ago and we had to put her down and the vet, you know, killed her in two seconds with just a little bit of chemicals. So um, for me, toxic mold has been more like that. Um, you know, diesel fumes and fragrances and laundry detergent and all that stuff. Um, people who react to that stuff more maybe tend to, to do better with brain retraining. But I've actually found that Eric Johnson has been correct in that avoiding the master toxin mold um, has made me less reactive to all that other stuff. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm really not going to take sides on the debate. Um, there may be some limbic dysfunction in this disease, but I haven't noticed that really. Um, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about a little bit today is um, the dichotomy between these two different philosophies. One philosophy is something's wrong with the brain. You have to learn to ignore the symptoms and the signals your brain is sending you about reactivity um, and just live your life. It's kind of what brain retraining says versus the other side, which says, no, you actually need to really listen to these clues your body's giving you and be more tuned into the body and and sort of like um, not freak out. You, you need to have a calm um, disposition and problem solving ability. If you, if you are, tend to be emotionally traumatized, then you know maybe you need some emotional healing. But I've just been able to be very calm about um, stimulus. But but here's where I want to go with that today because this isn't new information. A lot of you guys are familiar with brain retraining, or at least the debate. But w where I want to go with that today is that um, I found that that one of the reasons why I got sick in the first place is that my body. Think of it as as a a, a a camel that had layers of crap and toxins piled up on it mold toxins mold was the biggest one then you got heavy metals and you have biotoxins from the infections then you have environmental toxins from you know not eating organic food pollution um, all the chemicals we use in our home and i think mold was what set this up to be um to occur mold was the the, the master toxin but once mold took hold all these other toxins piled up and then what happened is that the body turns off detox. I talk about that in, in my book. And all the infections take over because the bioterrain is friendly toward infections. The infections thrive in that unhealthy bioterrain. So what I've actually found, I've been doing 15 months of mold avoidance now, meaning that I avoid those little teeny bits of toxic mold that, that, that I react to um, <clears throat> in extremely small quantities, is that as I've done that and as the mold, the master toxin has been lifted away, my body has been speaking to me about the other toxins. It's like, hey, Brian, now that you got the mold out of the way, let's talk about these other toxins. It's like my body now has the strength to tackle this. There's a couple common examples that mold avoiders talk about. Um, glyphosate. Now, I can actually taste and sense glyphosate in my food. People used to talk about being able to do this, and I never believed them. I'm not saying that I have a philosophical disagreement with glyphosate. Yes, of course I do. I'm saying I can actually sense it and it makes me sick now um stevia is another one a lot I, I use stevia for a long time but um i can't eat stevia anymore a lot of mold avoiders think that it it screws up the microbiome and it actually probably does um water i become a water snob like i can only drink certain waters and certain bottled water waters bother me and so you you kind of would hit this divergence now at this point in the recovery should brian ignore these little clues and just say your limbic system is messed up, man. It shouldn't matter. Or should Brian listen to the little clues? And I've experimented with doing both things, with trying to ignore them, trying to brain retrain, trying to 
get my brain to ignore it and um, it, not freaking out about it, um, it, it, not panicking, but listening to my body about these um, inputs. I've experimented with both, and my conclusion so far is that it very much is the better direction to go to listen to your body and even spend a couple of years being overly tuned in to these inputs because basically it's your body trying to reverse years of toxicity. Um, we know there are tons of neurodegenerative diseases, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, people in bed right now in nursing homes drooling on the floor. I don't think brain retraining is going to get all of them out of bed. Some of them maybe, but people are dying of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a fatal disease. It shuts down your organ system. So I think this toxicity is a very serious topic and I don't think it's a good idea to um, simply um, uh, write it all off. And again, I'm not taking sides on the brain retraining debate. There are a lot of people that say that they've gotten better with brain retraining and I'm not going to argue with them. And you know, I'm not, I'm not really, I'm just sharing my own experience and thoughts on this. And, um, you know, the, um, for me, I've experienced my body now that the mold piece has been removed. My body is now communicating with me about these other pieces. And the, the most important part of this discussion is I'm seeing the fruit of that. I'm seeing my health improve. I'm seeing issues that I've dealt with for decades, um, go away. And so it's not just like, this is my theory. Like I've actually noticed that being sensitive to my body and listening to my body is, um, you know, a good thing. Now, maybe there will come a point in a year or two or three or whatever, where that reactivity doesn't shut off. And I need to do brain retraining more. I don't know. I'm just speculating that hasn't happened to me yet. Um, but so far, my experience again has been that um, avoiding tiny bits of toxic mold of course, avoiding larger amounts too, but avoiding it even down to the to the minuscule amounts has supercharged. My new book is called Lyme Disease Supercharged. It has supercharged my recovery. Um, now, there's some mysterious reasons why this may be the case, you know. And I, I'm speculating now. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. So just take this with a grain of salt. But um, I, I speculate that this mold somehow is like kryptonite to our bodies, especially with Lyme disease, and it allows these infections to proliferate. One interesting thing that just happened to me is um, back when I used to live in a moldy environment, I used to take all of these parasite uh, drugs and herbs, and they helped a little bit, but they didn't really seem to do anything. It always felt like there was something protecting these parasites. I could never really wrap my mind around it. What was protecting these parasites? Well, I, I now think and believe that the toxic mold um, actually acts as like a shield or a biofilm around these parasites and helps them. And when you get out of the toxic mold and you avoid it, the parasites sort of become naked and they have nowhere to run. And this, you know, a lot of people kill parasites on the full moon. Well, this last full moon, I had a absolutely apocalyptic parasite killing week where I was taking all these herbs and drugs. By the way, I'm not a doctor. If you're going to do parasite treatment, herbs or drugs, consult a doctor. And um, I mean, stuff was dying and coming out of me. I had this weird body odor. My, my, you know, going to the restroom was crazy. All these parasites in me were dying. I never had that success in uh, you know, moldy environment. So I think mold avoidance is this leverage point to decrease toxic burden and to decrease parasites and um, this burden in our body. But I, I've just felt strongly that at least at this phase of my healing, um, it's been very important for me to listen to the clues that my body is giving me um, and not to ignore them and not to try to train my brain away from um, acknowledging these clues. And, you know, when I was in that bad environment, I was extremely sick. I mean, I, you know, I, I was um, having dementia symptoms and um, felt like I couldn't recognize my kids' faces anymore. There was a six-month period of time where I barely even got out of bed and I don't even remember it. I was probably headed for Alzheimer's disease you know, this was a very serious thing. And in that environment, um, I was um, essentially ignoring all of the symptoms and inputs because I had been in remission from Lyme disease for 10 years. And so I was like, oh, this is just a, a setback. You'll be fine. You know, just I was working four jobs up until the last year where I was too disabled to do anything. So I had already sort of tried that road of, you know, um, ignoring 
my my issues and in, in trying to plow through it and going to birthday parties with the kids and Halloween and you know Christmas parties I mean I was not thinking much about any of this stuff um, so you know now it's like I'm sort of ready to listen to my body a little bit more and I'm not saying that there aren't some people that do get stuck in that um, limbic activation loop and need to be talked out of that but but I've experienced at least in the first 15 months of mold avoidance that that has not been the case for me at all. It's actually been the opposite, that my body finally is able to communicate with me about what we need to see happen. And when you really think about it, you know, some of the some of the people that um, advocate brain retraining, and I have a lot of respect for these people, by the way, I'm not, I, I'm not, you know, saying I, I'm holier than thou or no more than anybody. But one of the interesting things that they say is that, well, look at normal people why can joe and cindy and bob be in this moldy movie theater and they are fine and they're healthy so everybody should be able to do that and so that therefore people who are reacting to those toxins there's something wrong with their brain they shouldn't be reacting we need to retrain the brain well i just don't think that that argument holds a lot of validity and the reason is that we are all different some people die of cancer at age 20 or at age three years old, there's childhood cancer. Some people, my, my grandma died of Alzheimer's disease when I was eight and she was 52. 52 years old, Alzheimer's disease. My uncle died of multiple sclerosis. He was bedridden for 20 years. But then on the other hand, I have other relatives who are um, you know, in their 70s and they don't eat well and they are healthy or at least they live a happy life. You know, They're already 70, they've already succeeded in, in living a good life. Um, even if they die tomorrow of toxic exposure, their life has still been a su success. They've lived a long, healthy life. So there are these differences between us, genetics, exposures, infections, um, epigenetics, all this stuff. So I don't think it's really fair to say that if someone reacts to uh, mold in a movie theater and another person doesn't, um, that we should all be able to just be like that person. I actually think it's kind of the opposite of that, that you know, once this vicious cycle gets started and these infections get established, and toxicity takes root and um, pathology begins in the brain, neurodegenerative pathology begins in the brain, we are different than the normal people and, and our bodies are compromised. And so I actually think that instead of taking the approach that um, we should train away our sensitivities, we should actually um, take the approach that maybe it's our body trying to tell us something. And um, you know, I, I do want to make a distinction here. There, there are some people who do seem to just react to everything. And, um, you know, maybe things that aren't even hurting them. They just get stuck in this limbic loop and, and their body just won't shut it off. And for those types of people, you know, brain retraining may be um, excellent, exactly what they need. So I think it's important for each individual to start to be able to identify, am I reacting to this because it is... Um, really hurting me or am I reacting to this because it is my brain is stuck in a, in, a, in a loop and one of the best tools I've discovered to find the answer to this question is to do Eric style extreme avoidance and you, you know for those of you don't, who don't know what that is it's described in my book um, and it's also described in Eric Johnson and Lisa Petterson's books on mold avoidance when you do mold avoidance and you get really clear and you get away from the city and away from toxic mold and you um, th throw away your clothes and get, you know, I'm wearing Walmart t-shirts now so I can throw them away easily if they get contaminated. They're like $2. Um, and you basically detox out in nature away from all this toxic stimulus. It allows these burdens to be lifted off of your body and your body can communicate to you and say, hey, this is serious, don't go near toxin A, exhibit A. But hey, exhibit B, you know, that's actually just a nuisance, like diesel fuels or uh, diesel fumes or, you know, walking down the detergent aisle in Walmart, um, those, that's just, you know, that it's just a nuisance. And those sensitivities even went away for me the more mold avoidance that I did. So you have to get back to a baseline level where your body can communicate with you. If you're saturated with toxins and society and glyphosate and pollution and, and 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 you know especially mold if you're constantly saturated you're not going to be able to parse out what the problems are you know eric said that he noticed that um he, that propane fumes didn't bother him anymore when he did mold avoidance but he would have never found that out if he never did mold avoidance to try to isolate which variables are the important ones so 
I think it's a very dis serious discussion here. I mean, people in our society are being poisoned by known chemicals. I mean, we know, guys, we know now that our world is full of toxicity. A lot of these mold supertoxins, the ones that really make people sick, are actually believed to be mold mixed with chemicals, right? So the chemical piece does come back into the picture. Mold that is eating these chemicals or is threatened by these chemicals and the mold is um, uh, producing worse toxins because of this. So we know we live in a toxic world. We know that our food, our building materials, our clothing, our cars, um, everything around us is is toxic. And so I don't think it's fair to say, oh, just because John and Betty and Susan and Mike down the street can tolerate um, these toxins that everybody should be able to and that therefore if you can't tolerate them, um, something is wrong with your brain or the brain needs to be retrained. So um, this, this parasite killing episode, when I was killing all these parasites uh, over this last full moon, it was astonishing to me how much crap was still coming out of me. I've already been detoxing in the wilderness for 15 months and it seemed like, because you know, I've taken all these parasite herbs and drugs before. It's not like they're new to me. Some people might say, oh, well, you were just reacting to these drugs or they're toxic. No, 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 no. I've taken all these drugs in the same doses, the same bottles even. I mean, I have the same um, exact bottles that I've always used. There's nothing different about these parasite drugs. And all of a sudden, this time around, you know, not only am I having all this parasite die off, but it feels like these parasites are storing up toxicity. Mold toxins and strange odors and all this crap is coming out of me when I'm doing these parasite cleanses. And so I just don't think that th this is a non-issue. For some reason, um, mold sick people store up this toxicity and it does matter and it will lead to neurodegenerative uh, chronic inflammatory diseases like Alzheimer's and things like that. I don't think it's a benign topic and I think it's a big mistake just to write it off as being a limbic dysfunction. Um, in some people, that may be the case. Again, I'm not saying for everybody, but for me personally, um, these th th there has just been this gargantuan toxic accumulation that has happened inside my body, I think because of mold, because mold being the master toxin shuts off the body's ability to detox all these other lesser toxins. And so to actually get this stuff out for me has been what I think will give me the best chance to lead a happy and healthy life. Um, and not be an Alzheimer's patient in tomorrow or in five years. And, and, you know, even though I'm not totally well yet, you know, my, my psychological, the, the facial recognition and the memory stuff is totally gone hundred percent since I've been doing mold avoidance. I mean, I have maybe a hint of it once or twice a month for five minutes, but I used to have it all the time. Um, and, and that was one of the things that drove me to be so motivated to do this. I mean, a lot of people listening to this might be like, you know, I'll, I would never do extreme mold avoidance, you know, giving up your house and, um, you know, your belongings and everything. And um, I would never have done it either. But um, when you're on your last leg and you feel like you're dying, it's amazing the things you're willing to do. I mean, I remember, you know, now I kind of miss being in a house and um, I kind of miss, you know, my old life. But when that was, ha when I was in my old life and, and, and I had, someone told me, oh, have you looked into this extreme mold avoidance? And I did this mold avoidance sabbatical and I realized I was reacting to mold and my intuition said to get out. When that was happening, it was a small sacrifice to make. I was like, are you kidding me? There's a second chance here to, 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 to at health? Like, really? Okay, let's do it. You know, it wasn't at all a, a sad thing and it still isn't for me. I'm, you know, even though mold avoidance is hard living in an RV and, you know, having to avoid certain buildings, I still think back to how I used to be, how sick I used to be and saying goodbye to my family and my kids and everything. And um, it's still a lot better and I'm still very grateful for it. And my, my tolerance for mold is, is, is getting better slowly, very slowly. I can be around more problems and recover better, which is what's supposed to happen, right? The body becomes more resilient. So anyway, um, I just think this is a super important topic to not just um, gloss over the, it's a very big distinction between my brain is making a mistake. It's giving me the stimulus that is wrong and I need to retrain my brain and heal my brain so that this stimulus doesn't, um, trigger me versus 
um, these toxins, even in very small quantities, are have been building up in my system for decades because I live in a toxic world and because I'm susceptible to this for whatever reason, genetics or infections or whatever. And I really need to listen to my body. My body's trying to unload stuff that it's been um, carrying around for decades. And this is this is important. And you know whether someone switches over at some point from one to the other, where they you know where they get stuck in the limbic loop versus they continue to have um, to need to avoid uh, toxic insults. I I don't know about that. You know that hasn't happened for me. I have not switched over yet. I continue to you know the more toxins I avoid, um, the more my body is like thank you. And, and I'm going to reward you with, with a waterfall of crap and toxic junk coming out of your pores and every orifice of you and you're detoxing and you feel better. So that's been my experience. There have been a couple of times where I've attempted to employ, you know, a limbic retraining strategy and uh, it's actually made me worse. And um, there was one time we were camping in an area that had a really bad outdoor toxin and I was employing, it was a limbic retraining strategy. It was kind of my own made up strategy. Um, I haven't really formally done all of the limbic programs, but this was similar. You know, I had read about them and I sort of made up my own and I was able, I think I really was able to convince my brain that this stuff wasn't harmful and let's just detox it and move on. And I actually felt like this force field in my body that had been resisting this toxicity just sort of was like, fine, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to pretend we're an only, a normal person now. And that toxicity rushed into my system and just crushed me. And for a few days, I was open to the fact that, oh, maybe this is just a healing reaction or, or a Herx or a detox reaction. But no, 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 it wasn't. It, it put me backwards um, in the same way that, that extremely large doses of toxic mold put me backwards. And so that's happened to me a number of times now. Um, and so, you know, there have also been times where I have felt like um, a limbic retraining has helped me, but it's been more related to um, w toxins that shouldn't bother people. Like one time I was in the forest and I smelled pine trees and, you know, pine trees shouldn't be a problem for people, you know, and I felt like my brain got a little bit worked up about it and I was able to use some limbic techniques to to dissipate that. So I'm not against the technique and the in the um, the way that it works. Um, I, you know, I think that's one of the biggest problems with this whole discussion is there's this dichotomy. Limbic retraining is everything, 100%. Or you know, toxin um, avoidance is everything, 100%. And I, I'm not on that page. I, I I'm more open-minded about it. But my experience has been that my illness and my recovery has been 99% that my body has been extremely saturated. I mean like a sponge just loaded with this toxicity and that listening to the cues of my body and avoiding especially toxic mold but other insults like glyphosate. I mean I can't even eat non-organic food now. You know, I, I, I used to be able, in, when I was in a bad environment, I could eat anything, crap. It all was the same to me. It was like my body had just given up. But now that I'm detoxing, I cannot even tolerate non-organic food. If I eat non-organic food, I get sick. So should I be able to train myself to tolerate organic, uh, non-organic food again? I don't think so. You know, I mean, I think that my body is finally kick-starting. Kick you know, have you ever heard a, a car turn on or an airplane turn on, an engine starts up? Vroom! You know, I feel like my body is finally like waking up to and helping me um, avoid this stuff and get better. So anyway, this has been a long video. Thanks for hanging with me, but I think it's a really important topic. And again, just a disclaimer here, you know, I, I would not claim that I am, you know, a, an authority in, in brain retraining and, and I don't want to be um, perceived as such. I'm just sharing, you know, my experience. And also you guys keep in mind that I'm not a doctor. Uh, these videos that I make are for informational purposes only just to share my own experiences um, and opinions. You guys need to consult a licensed physician for your own medical decisions. Okay? Thanks for listening.